What's up guys, good to see you again. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna remake a level from the game Control, which is one of the visually richest games I have played recently. I figured remaking one of its simple levels can be a good practice for beginner environment artists and also anyone who is interested in creating environments and spaces in Unreal Engine 5. This level in the game is played whenever the game wants to teach you something and it's kind of a tutorial level. It's simple and minimalistic but still visually interesting and inspiring. As you can see it's just some cubes with different scales and a cool material and also a moody and foggy lighting with some post production effects on it. It will be extremely easy to remake and will be a good and fun practice for beginner level artists so let's jump into it and get started. Alright, obviously the first step is to model the environment so I'm gonna add the cube to my scene and by duplicating and scaling it I'm gonna try to remake the space. Other than the cubes there is also a reverse pyramid in the background so don't forget to add it to your model too. Here I'm using Cinema 4D to do the modeling but of course you can use any 3D package you are comfortable with and after you finish the modeling you can export the file and import it into UE5. A quick tip here is that after I finish the job I connected all the boxes and turned them into one single object with only one UV map to make it easier to manage in UE5 but you can also leave them as separate objects and handle the UVs in UE5 later. Okay now I imported the C4D file into UE5 and if you want to learn how to do it you can click the link above and watch the tutorial I made about this topic. Alright the next step is to create the material for the cubes. This is how it looks in the game and if you want to spend more time and getting the material exactly like your reference is important for you, you can search the web for the texture and create a material with it. But here it can also just be a marble material with some adjustments and I think it will look good enough so let's open Quicksail Bridge and see what we can find. Just search marble and choose one of these guys here and import it into UE5. You may need to try different materials here to see which one is the best fit for the scene. Keep in mind that after we create our lighting it will have a huge effect on the materials too and it will change how they look so we will come back to this stage and play with the materials later again if it's necessary. Alright I chose this one and assigned it to the cubes. As you can see it's not tied properly so let's open it up and fix it. Here just check the tiling and play with tiling X and tiling Y values to get the result you like for your scene. Here I'm going with 30 by 30 which looks fine on our cubes. Now let's open albedo tint and make it a little bit yellowish based on the reference we have. Okay now let's change the contrast and the brightness of the material to make the black areas bigger and decrease the areas which we have the patterns. To do so just enable albedo controls and increase the contrast. It makes the black areas bigger and also if you increase the brightness the yellow patterns will be more visible and brighter. As I said earlier, the lighting has a huge effect on how the materials look, so for now we can stop working on the material and after we finish the lighting we can come back to this part again. So let's jump into the next step and create our lighting. I'm gonna delete all the lighting actors and start from scratch. In the outliner find all your lighting actors and delete them so you have a complete black scene and you're ready to go. The first actor I'm gonna add is a directional light. You can find it here in the lighting section and drag it into the scene. Then here in the search bar type sky atmosphere and drag it into the scene too. The next actor is a sky light and the last one is an exponential height fog. Here in the outliner create a folder and drag the lighting actors inside it to have a more organized outliner and make it easier to manage. Here we have 4 actors which will be enough for lighting the scene but later if it's necessary we can add other light actors too. Before we start playing with these actors make sure you have fixed the exposure so it won't change automatically in the viewport. Select the post process volume and put both minimum brightness and maximum brightness on 1. Here we don't want a blue sky so select the sky atmosphere actor, open the Rayleigh scattering and choose a white color. The next thing we should take into consideration is the height fog actor. Select it and here in the fog density the higher the number the heavier your fog will be. Here I don't want a heavy fog so let's put it on 0.02. Also I'm gonna turn the fog in scattering color to white to make my scene brighter. 
All right, now the angle of the sun plays an important role on how your scene looks. By holding Ctrl and L and then moving your mouse, you can find the best possible angle for it. Here I don't want any shadows, so I'm gonna put it behind the pyramid to achieve a flat lighting. Now if you want to make your scene a little bit brighter, you can just increase the skylight's intensity. Select it and put its intensity on something about 2 or 3. Yeah, and that's all you need to do for the lighting and from now on by tweaking the values we talked about, you can achieve the result you like most for your scene. Alright, the next step is to add some post-process effects to make it look more interesting. Select the post-process volume and here let's add some bloom. In the post-processing stage, everything we do should be subtle, so be careful not to overdo anything and mess up your project. Here I'm gonna add a little chromatic aberration. Something about 0.5 works fine here in this case. You can also open the image effects and add some vignette. One looks good and now in the temperature tab let's decrease the tint to minus 0.15 to make it look a little greenish. In the global section, I'm gonna increase my contrast to something about 1.3 and for the last thing, I'm gonna add some film grain to my scene. I'm going with a value about 1 but if you want to exaggerate the effect, you can use higher values too. Alright, now let's add a third person character to the scene and explore the level. Just here hit add and select add feature or content pack and select the third person option. Add it to the project and then drag the third person character into the scene. In the details tab, go to the pawn section and put the auto possess player on player 0 so when we play the level, we take control of the character. We should also add collision to our model so select it and open it up and here in the collision tab, put the collision complexity on use complex collision as a simple. Hit save and now let's play the level. Yeah, it's looking great for a quick and simple project and if you want to spend more time to make it even better, you can try different textures for the cubes and also put more time on the lighting and post-process effects. I hope this was useful for you and if it helped you learn something new, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.